Hello lovely learners, welcome back to A Life Learned. So to start off, to explain why this video is a bit later than I had planned on posting it originally or promised is because I actually had to reschedule the interview a few times. Um, originally it was supposed to be recorded in my space and I just felt like I couldn't handle that in the end. For one, I had to crate my dog and it would just be too difficult to record with him around in the crate because he'd probably cry knowing that we were in the same room. And also, um, I just have a lot of anxiety around people seeing my space um, because she obviously didn't want to record in my recording space. She wanted to record in my living room and um, with that, it was just like having two complete strangers in my home and then having it on camera um, set off too many triggers, I guess, uh, as a result of me being abused through not doing my chores properly or whatever, and then having sort of a complex from having a messy home when I was uh, younger with my mom. It just caused a lot of uh, obsessive concepts around my space and it was a lot easier to request that we just record at the station. And uh, thankfully I got a really lovely reporter to be doing my interview, and so she um, was really, really accommodating and was just like, yeah, it's no problem, we can just do it in the station. And uh, funny enough, CTV is located in a really weird location in London, so I had a bit of a hard time finding it. It was sort of a bit of a runaround, you could say. It's in the middle of this weird neighborhood uh, in, like, southwest London, sort of, yeah. And uh, ended up having to, like, hop a fence to get to it because it was just in the middle of a neighborhood and very difficult to get to. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, when I got there, she actually let me use the makeup room that they have. And man, I wish I had that all the time. They had like lights all the way around the mirrors, of course, because they're like always on camera, right? So they have to make sure that it's all perfect. And I just like put on a bit of mascara, but still, it was really cool. And then uh, from there, she just basically very casually asked me to start with the history before my abuse in my teens um, and like how I ended up in that situation sort of thing. Um, and then in, in a really conversation type fashion would ask me questions about um, my mindset during the abuse and then how I ended up getting away and um, the experience of the courts, how I felt, how it affected me, various things like that. Um, and I'm not sure how we were long we were there, uh, I want to say like an hour and a half, might have been a little bit less, might have been a little bit more, um, but it wasn't too bad because she was just such a nice person that I didn't feel judged or imposed on or anything like that, um, but the whole setup was kind of anxiety filling just because I was on camera, um, which I sweat for even when I'm by myself doing my own stuff, uh, in front of two generally complete strangers and then it, they had darkened the room and put like a light up pointing down like like a spotlight right on me basically kind of like I was being interrogated although again she was really nice but the whole thing even though I had like this special stuff on called hydrosis um a hydrosis that's a condition it's called dry sol that you use for hydrosis to help block your pores so that you don't sweat so much I sweat right through it <laughs> soaked my shirt um, but it was okay because I brought sweat rags to deal with it later. Um, but yeah, I just kind of dealt and uh, ultimately came out somewhat frustrated because I really wish I hadn't said things more clearly um, or in a different way that was more directly answering her questions because I feel like I babbled and babbled. She said I did okay, but eh. Uh, shortly after, like within 20 minutes after she left, I called her and was like, can I just clarify a few things because <laughs> I'm already not happy with what I said and um, when we talked she actually clarified that I did say some of the things that I wasn't I didn't think I had said in, at other parts so that's what rambling gets you and you're never sure quite what you did say but she seems to think she got her answers so that's good although it really did show me that um, we could have been there for a very long time and she still wouldn't have got the full picture of the situation. Like, you can only ever really get snippets and it's it's kind of made me realize how much... Like, I honestly feel like I'm being completely transparent on these videos. I don't have anything to hide. Maybe I don't want to show you guys my worst side. It's not necessarily hiding it though, it's just like, that's not a nice thing to share with people all the time. But 
I'm just being me. I'm not hiding my vulnerabilities. I am a very vulnerable person, very sensitive. By all means, know that. That's fine. I don't. I don't care that people know that. Um, I'm. I feel comfortable with you knowing that, and I trust you guys because you guys are so lovely. Um, but you're still only getting these little snapshots of me and of my life, and and I. I only just realized that doing that interview. Uh, because of how much I can see that she's only getting just a bit of a snapshot of, of the whole story. And to that regard, it is only going to be like a, a two to five minute piece as far as I understand. And a bit more broad than just about me. It's not really just my story, but more about like victims in the court system and, and their experience going through it and when they report uh, relating to my story. But um, not just about me, which sort of eases the anxiety a bit, but the interesting part about it, the reason she was so excited to get the interview was because apparently I am the first victim to have spoken up and wanted to share my story in like a decade, which sort of surprised me. And I mean, I guess I'm just being naive. I've never really looked into it. Uh, she means just in London in general, like not in Canada or in, in North America, but just in London. Um, I'm the first to speak up in 10 years, uh, or about 10 years, and it's just like, I guess because I'm so open about it, I forget how much more afraid and self-conscious other people can be about the concept, and um, I've had a number of people, even someone in my last video comment, you know, you don't want to be that person, and I think about it, and I'm just like, well, I asked that person to clarify what they meant, they never responded. <laughs> but um, when I think about it, when I interpret what that says, yes, yes I do. I want to be that person because doing this interview actually revived me in a way. I've been feeling so dead and drained because of the courts and, and how it sucked me dry and I've kind of been in this mental collapse. And, and with that feeling unable to really work on my edited content, which is one thing that really made me feel still alive in life and still like I was doing something because uh, I haven't been able to work of course and, and those videos are in many ways very much about talking about ideas that are controversial or emotional and um, contradictory to a lot of things that we were grown up to believe and to think and to accept as fact that aren't um, or to accept as unchanging when they can. They can change and we can have different ideas about them and that's what I love to do is share these new ideas and open your guys mind and have you open mind in new ways and share different comments about what you think about these ideas and so the fact that I haven't really had the mental energy to do such things in over six months basically since the uh, nationalism video that I did um, back in June I've just it's kind of been a bit of a spiral where, or a feedback loop, where I don't have the energy to do these high intense videos that are trying to break stigmas and thus I feel more dead inside because I'm not getting the feedback of feeling like I'm doing something and thus I'm more drained and I don't have the energy to do it. It's unfortunate and I've been working on it best I can and just doing these vlogs to try and keep up at all but I've been drained and, and not feeling too good about life and doing this interview makes me feel like I'm doing something again, like I'm trying to be active and break those stigmas and say it's okay to speak up and say that you've been hurt. Just because someone else hurt you doesn't mean that you're lesser of a person. Those were their actions, not yours. And it's it's sadly very easy to get into a victim mentality where you stay there and other people think why don't you run and why didn't you leave but that's because they're in a healthier mindset where they don't let themselves be abused and, and let isn't even the right word, they just uh, upon their first instance of being abused they know to walk away. Some of us don't know that. Some of us were abused as children and that's what we know life is. Our parents abused us so that's how we think humans are supposed to treat each other. It's really sad, it's true and there's plenty of us who even find ourselves in those situations and we don't even know how we got there, like it just sort of slowly, very slowly developed and we know it's wrong, but we don't know how to get out because of the emotional entanglement and, or financial or otherwise, like there's so many complicated reasons that it's, uh, it's frustrating when people don't understand. And that's what I want to work on is breaking those stigmas of people 
not understanding. Uh, and it's funny because I actually feel empowered by people making comments like in my last video where they say, you know, you're going to be that person. Yes, I am. I'm okay with being that person because if someone doesn't speak up, then how is anyone supposed to feel like it's okay to speak up and understand that people not understanding doesn't make you lesser of a person. It just makes them less educated. It can certainly affect you in life if your boss, for example, is one of those people. But we are thankfully getting into a world where more and more people are accepting that stigmas are not okay and that being stuck up and hoity-toity as, as in broad terms of not accepting that we're human humans with mistakes and flaws we all have bad things happen to us and we can all recover and be a perfectly fine normal good person if given the opportunity and not judged um ugh, just so frustrated i lost my train of thought there but anyways that's what i want to do i want to fight those stigmas and i want to be that and i feel like that's what this interview had revived or had done a little bit in my local community because um, it is going to be this little segment discussing that you can get away. This is a person who did it. It's really difficult on victims, um, but it can happen sort of thing. And uh, so to end off, just to let you guys know, she did say that I am um, able to have a copy or likely able to have a copy that I can put on my channel. I just have to accredit CTV uh, in the comments, which of course I'm willing to do. So hopefully I will be able to share with you guys the little two to five segment, two to five minute segment that she makes, um, because it's only going to be aired here in Ontario, I do believe, but uh, or probably only in like Southern Ontario. <laughs> but either way, I can probably get it on here for you guys to see. So that'll be fun. Um, and in the meantime, yeah. That's how it, uh, how it felt or what it was like to be interviewed by a CTV reporter. She was absolutely lovely, probably one of the nicest persons I met in a long, long time, and I really appreciate that for how much it eased everything, but um, ultimately it's just anxiety filling because interviews, <laughs> you know, you're in front of a person being questioned, and that can, I guess you can always just be afraid to not say something the, quite the right way. <laughs> um, but again, she said that I can call um, and let her know if I want to change anything and she'll like paraphrase and instead of doing the actual quote which is really nice to know and I have done and may do again I'm not sure so far I think I'm okay with it but otherwise just trying to take things day to day and um, work on my therapy so that I can get back to those stigma breaking videos hopefully and uh, in the meantime, if you guys ever still have requests about any awesome ideas you might have for videos and, or um, even just casual vlogs or advice, anything like that, I'm moving slower, but I'm still moving. So please do feel free to still leave requests in the comments at any time. And otherwise, if you've ever been interviewed by a reporter of any kind, please do feel free to share that in the comments. Let me know how it was for you. And uh, do join me again next week where I try again to share a little something I've learned or experienced in life.